Hello everyone. This presentation is about how we can use FME in the extraction of 3D buildings from point cloud data, with a focus on the challenges of processing large data sets with a 3D component. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Bert Meus. I live in Belgium, close to the small historical city of Leuven. I have a background in bioengineering and earth observation at the Karl Leuven University. Now I'm working for about 12 years in the company JIM as an analyst in GIS and Earth Observation. For those who do not know JIM, we are a private company and an expert in everything related to geographic information. I'm working a lot on remote sensing related projects as well as projects with a focus on GIS. I started using FME for simple tasks such as converting KML files to shape files and the other way around and gradually came to know that the software is a very powerful tool to process GIS data and is relatively easy to use even if you don't have a lot of scripting and programming skills like me. Let's give an overview of what I will be talking about today. First, I will give some background information about why we did this project. Then I will discuss the objectives and give a small overview of the methodology. Then I will focus on three specific challenges in the project where we use the FME software. And I will end with some conclusions. It's time for a statement. Life is better in 3D. Movies are better in 3D. A lot of video games are now in 3D. And even our World Fair roller coaster that you see here in the background would only be dull if it would be a flat one. In our company, we focus on JS, but usually we only do that in two dimensions, X and Y. It's not that we do not want to go to the third dimension, but usually the required input data is missing. This is what we want to change with this project, to add the third dimension to the data that we use, and more specifically to our building data. And that leads us to our geodata product that we as JM are very proud of. Belmap. In Belgium, although it's a relatively small country, our geopolitical situation is a mess and we even have six different governments. This causes that most of our geodata are produced and maintained at a regional level and are not aligned at all with each other. Belmap combines the best quality location data from more than 20 sources and bundles this data in seven clear teams, which you can see in the figure. It is a database with more than 5 million addresses and more than 7 million buildings in Belgium with a lot of extra information attached to them and includes a portal and an API service. Recently, we also expanded the product to the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Here we will focus on the building component of Belmap in Belgium. Up to now, the Belmap buildings were present as 2D footprint polygons. In the figure on the left, which shows the definition of the different LOD standards, this is a level of detail zero or LOD zero. So the buildings are present as simple flat 2D polygons. Within Belmap, we have the building height as an attribute in our 3D component, so we could go to LOD one if needed. LOD one is a box representation of the building with a flat roof. Let's take a look at the other LOD standards. In level of detail 2, the buildings are represented as a building model with standard roof structures present. LOD 3 adds more detail to the building representation. In LOD 4, also the interior features such as interior walls are present. This project is to take our Belma product to LOD 2, so to move away from the flat LOD 0 model and also the LOD 1 block model and to have more realistic representation of the building in 3D. For this, we use LiDAR point cloud data, which are made available for free by the regional sources. Let's go quickly over the methodology. First, we do some pre-processing on the point cloud data. Then, we use a specific tool to extract the 3D roof polygons from the LiDAR data. The, other, the outlines of the roof polygons are then matched to our Belmap building footprints, and in the same time, heavy geometrical corrections are performed. Also, the Belmap ID is added, so it can be linked to our other Belmap components. Walls are added, 
and an output in a specific format is created so we can visualize and use the LOD2 model of each building in Belgium. For most of these steps, FME was chosen as the most suitable tool to work with. Only the extraction of 3D roof polygons from the point cloud data required another specific tool. Let us already have a sneak peek at how the result will look like. This screenshot shows a house in a residential neighborhood. You see that we also managed to produce an LOD2 shape also for the smaller annex buildings such as garages and garden sheds. The first challenge I will discuss is the pre-processing of the LiDAR point clouds. We received different LiDAR point cloud data for the two major regions in Belgium, Flanders and Wallonia. The data for Flanders also covered the capital region of Brussels. Mainly for Flanders, the northern part of Belgium, the input data were really huge. There is over 30 terabytes of data for Flanders, delivered in hundreds of thousands of individual tiny point cloud files. This is of course way too much data to be processed in one go and also the large number of files and the way they were structured was problematic. For the next step, point cloud tiles of a manageable size are required, so we need to do some pre-processing. For this task, we used FME. FME allowed us to transform the bunch of unstructured lighter point cloud data into nice one by one square kilometer tiles. And if we do this, let's first check the screenshot. The feature reader reads the point cloud files into FME. Then, a clipper is used to clip each point cloud file onto the one by one square kilometer tile extent. Then, a point cloud combiner transformer is used to merge the different clipped point clouds together, and finally, an export to the LAS format is done. This is the standard point cloud format. To be able to do this, we must create a one by one square kilometer grid using the Tyler transformer. And we looped over each tile using, using a workspace runner. There is still one issue. The feature reader is not able to read all 30 terabytes of data because it is way too big. Reading only the overlapping pod cloud data works, but it is really slow because FME has to check for each input file individually what the extent is. If you have hundreds of thousands of input files, this takes a lot of time. And if you repeat this for each one by one square kilometer tile, it's not efficient. To solve this, we did it only once in a separate workspace and stored the minimum and maximum X and Y extents of each file into a CSV table. And using this CSV table, it's much faster to make a selection of which point cloud files should be read. Next step is the extraction of the 3D rooftop polygons from the tile point cloud data. I will not go into detail over this step as this has nothing to do with FME, but after some investigation, we concluded that the NV LiDAR tool gave the best results in terms of completeness and accuracy. However, the outputs of this tool have several shortcomings. There is no spatial match with our Belma building footprints layer, there are gaps and overlaps and some false positive and false negative rooftop polygons are present. To solve all these issues, a long list of geometrical corrections is required. Again, this is something where FME proved to be very useful. Here on the left, you see a top view on a building with a hipped roof. The red rectangle is how the building is present in our Belmont building database. The black triangles and quadrangles the outputs of the NV LiDAR tool. You clearly see that there are gaps and overlaps and that there is no match with the Belmont footprint. We used FME to convert this situation to the cleaner version we able to see on the right. The outlines match nicely to the Belmont 2D footprints and all gaps and overlaps are removed. When doing the development of the FME models, do these geometrical corrections, we quickly discovered that the 3D component proved to be a real challenge. As most FME geometrical transformers are built to be run on 2D data, 
Often, the transformers do give an output, but those results did not always meet our quality requirements. Snapper transformers, however, did not have any difficulties with the Z component and do exactly what you would expect on the 3D data. But still, it's tricky to use them because they tend to make 3D polygons non planar The solution that we took in place to do the required geometrical corrections was to convert the input data to 2D using the 2D forcer transformer, and then do all geometrical corrections you need in 2D, such as the area on area overlayer in the screenshot. And finally, you can use the surface draper transformer to convert your correct polygons back to the original 3D shapes. The last challenge I would like to discuss in this presentation is the huge amount of data to be post-processed. When run on complete Belgium, the building detection tool extracted about 23 million of 3D rooftop polygons out of the point cloud data. At some point during the post-processing, we will also add walls, and that means that a multitude more 3D polygons will be added. At that time, we just will have over 100 million of building polygons to be processed by FME. And we are lucky that Belgium is still a relatively small country with only 11 million of inhabitants. Imagine what we had to do if we would have to process France or Germany or even bigger countries like that. We also had some prerequisites. We did not want to have to use supercomputers and we tried to do the work using only two standard virtual processing servers. And also, we want to make sure that we could produce an output for each single building in Belgium since we did not want to lose any buildings along the way. So to summarize, this means that from 23 million 3D rooftop polygons, we use RME to create 9 million LOD2 building shapes. How did we handle this? We kept working on the 1 by 1 square kilometer tiles and used workspace runners to loop over each tile. Locking transformers were avoided as much as possible. These transformers are always very slow. I did the maths and a transformer, which takes only one second to run over a 1 by 1 square kilometer tile, which is still relatively fast, takes almost 9 hours to run over complete Belgium. The more blocking transformers you can avoid, the quicker your processing will be. In many cases, you can find a workaround in order not to have to use a blocking transformer. Workarounds are often complex and make the models less readable by others, but sometimes they are the only solution to make it work at a reasonable speed. This is also the case for my last bullet point. FME is good at processing 99.999999% of all buildings, but sometimes it happens that an awkwardly shaped polygon makes a transformer fail or even the model crash. If you have such a high number of polygons to process, it happens from time to time that you encounter this on one or a few polygons. But do never panic, there's always a workaround possible that allows you to avoid the error or crash and also lets you process those awkward shapes. But as said before, it makes the models much more complex and of course it takes extra development time. At the very end of the processing, FME is used to create outputs in the CGM tiles format. This format allows for easy integration into different viewers, such as you can see here in the example. This viewer, for example, allows you to type in an address and will zoom to the building on that specific address. You see in the screenshot, that the results of our processing look quite okay. But there are still several improvements possible. Some of them we are trying to tackle right now. Maintenance of this product is very important as we want the product to be kept up to date, so we also cover the new buildings. To conclude, I can say that FME is a good tool to process 3D data. Both point cloud data 
as 3D polygons. Many challenges of this project were related to the huge amount of data. To overcome this, we use styling and avoid blocking transformers as much as possible. After doing that, we were able to successfully generate the bell map in level of detail too. And because life is better in 3D, our bell map product also became better. And with that, I can end my presentation. If you would have any questions, please just ask. I also have put my email address here in case you want to contact me later on. Thanks a lot for attending.